In a world where we're kind of hesitant on the carbohydrates because we see what they've done to us in the past, I know what they did to me before when I was 300 pounds, <laughs> I know we kind of tread lightly around the whole carbohydrate world, but we always want to hear a way that we can improve our sensitivity to carbohydrates. Now, our sensitivity in a good way, meaning when we do consume carbohydrates, they go to the right place, right? Carbohydrates are very interesting. They have an opportunity to go into our muscle and actually provide us with valuable fuel and make us feel good. And they also have the ability to not go into the muscle and to go into a fat cell and really mess us up. Now I'm going to open with a study that demonstrates exactly this. And then we'll kind of get into a couple of different strategies, two very cool strategies, one called the five two intermittent fasting protocol and another one called the 175 25 protocol, which are just easy things that you can implement. So let's go ahead and jump in. Hey, after this video, you have to check out this awesome new refrigerated bar. Okay, it is a keto friendly bar called the Good Lovin' Bar. And if you saw my Aldi haul a couple months ago, holy cow, that is an amazing, amazing keto find. I was like jumping over the moon because I had found them. Okay, and that was completely organic, completely like I discovered them. I was like, what the heck? This is like the cleanest bar I have ever seen. Hence why it's in the refrigerated section because it doesn't have preservatives or anything in it at all. I'm a fan of a lot of different keto bars, but this Good Lovin' Bar is seriously amazing. You have to keep it in the fridge, which is not a big deal, because it's actually like food. It's not like just a bunch of random chemicals put together. So after I did that video, they reached out to me and were like, hey, we love you, we love your stuff. I'm like, let's find a way to work together. I wanna to be able to get you out to my audience in a more formal way. So here we are. So check out that link down below to try the Good Lovin' Bar. Whether you are keto or not, it is phenomenal. Okay, we're talking no adulterated ingredients. It is awesome, made with coconut butter most of the time, which is like my favorite form of butter anyway. So delicious, amazing different flavor profiles. My son loves it. Just check them out down below in the description before I start like drooling all over the place as I'm talking about it. Let's get into the science. So this first study kind of sets the tone. The Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism had published a study that looked at obese people versus non-obese people and how their bodies treated carbohydrates. This is what's wild. We cannot say at all that carbohydrates and people are all created equal in that same vein. Like, people respond differently, okay? So what they did is they gave them both carbohydrates and they wanted to see, well, how do they use them? So obese people, or actually let's start with non-obese people. Non-obese people, when they consumed carbohydrates, they found that 41% of the carbohydrates went into their muscle. 7% went into their fat. Okay, because insulin can spike and still allow carbohydrates to enter into a fat cell and grow a fat cell or into, into a muscle in the form of glycogen. 41% muscle, 7% fat. Not terrible, right? At least most of it's going to muscle. Here's the interesting thing. Obese people, which the caveat being they're obese, they're probably insulin resistant, but we don't know based on this study. Okay, when they consumed the same amount of carbohydrates under the same circumstances, they had only 19% go into the muscle and they had 17% go into the fat. So as you gain more fat, you end up developing less insulin sensitive muscles and more insulin sensitive fat, meaning your body has now tilted the scale and wants the carbs and the insulin to go into the fat because that is the, the, that is the preferential place. Whereas when you're leaner, it goes into the muscle. Now, I've been fat, I've been thin, my insulin resistance and sensitivity has probably changed. But one of the things that stays true no matter what is no matter who we are, we want better insulin sensitivity, especially if we're doing a lower carb or ketogenic protocol because that allows us the ability to have some carbs every once in a while and have them go into the muscle, not to the fat. Let's put it this way. If you do keto and you are super insulin sensitive, you allow yourself the ability to have more leeway with carbs. And that doesn't make you a bad keto person. That doesn't make the keto police take you to jail. It might upset the keto police because you're the lucky person that gets to have carbs and still remain in ketosis. You're the lucky person that gets to have carbs occasionally and not lose all the benefits of keto. But you have to be insulin sensitive for that to happen. Otherwise, the carbs will go to fat or they will not go anywhere because you're, quote, resistant. They're just 
not going anywhere, so they're staying in the bloodstream, knocking you out of ketosis. If the carbs get absorbed into the tissue, you can still create ketones because they're going to the right place. That's why I typically say have carbs after a workout when they go. Anyway, let's talk about this 5-2 strategy, and then we'll talk about the 175-25 strategy. The 5-2 protocol was heavily looked at in a very interesting study published in the British Journal of Nutrition. Now, I'll get to that study, but let me kind of paraphrase what 5-2 is. It is where you eat at relative maintenance or even slightly above maintenance calories five days out of the week, and then two days out of the week, cut down to 25% of your energy demand. So you have basically a 75% reduction in calories, but you just do it two days a week, okay? So the British Journal of Nutrition published a paper where they looked at a group that just reduced calories a little bit every day compared to a group that did 5-2, as I just described, and then a third group that did 5-2, but with unlimited amounts of fat and unlimited amounts of protein, okay? Which is kind of cool, okay? Kind of like keto, but just with some flexibility, right? Well, they had them do this for three months, and they had them remain in a slight deficit over the course of a week, right? At the end of three months, they all lost roughly the same amount of weight, but the 5-2 group lost significantly more weight in the way of fat. And the 5-2 group with unlimited protein and unlimited fat also lost weight, but lost more fat weight. Okay, well, that's not what this study is about. Body composition is cool, but what I'm talking about is insulin sensitivity. Their fasting insulin levels in the 5-2 group were astronomically better than the regular caloric deficit group. So what I'm saying with this is even if you are not someone that likes to intermittent fast, but you're doing keto, if you keep your calories relatively high five days out of the week, but then just give yourself two days a week where you cut down to 25% calories, so just really low calorie days, two days a week, that improves your insulin sensitivity and your ability to tolerate carbs and have those carbohydrates go into the muscle, not into the fat, that much better. I'm trying to speak to a very simple pragmatic thing here that anyone can do, okay? I talk about intermittent fasting, complicated things, prolonged fasting, this, that, timing that. This is something that anyone could do. You go five days out of the week and then take the weekends where you just cut calories down low or vice versa, whatever. You do it a couple days during the week. But let's talk about this other protocol, okay? This one's called the 175-25 approach. And there was a cool study published in Rejuvenation Research that looked at just this. The 175-25 protocol is where you actually have 175% of your calorie intake on one day, followed by 25% on the next day. 175 the next day, 25 the next day. You're constantly going up and down, but in a huge surplus. This is kind of cool because it means that you get to have like a ton of calories one day if you wanted to, as long as the next day is ultimately 25% of your daily intake, right? You're just eating a lot less. It doesn't matter if you fast or not on the low calorie day, as long as your calories at that 25% level. This is kind of cool because for me, who has a short attention span, I love it. I hate the thought of having to restrict calories aggressively for a long period of time or even minusculely. I would much rather say, today is my surplus day, and yes, I get to enjoy food, still, of course, remaining ketogenic in this case, and then tomorrow, I can deal with the fact that it's just one day of reduced calories, because I, you know, tomorrow, I get to have more calories. So the Rejuvenation Research paper demonstrated that there was a tremendous, tremendous improvement in insulin sensitivity and the ability to tolerate carbs just by doing this. So again, it gets you this ability to be able to process carbohydrates. Now, a huge caveat here, this does not mean you can go out and eat a red velvet cake, okay? You can't just go out and do that. But what you can do is have more ability to, maybe those extra carbs that find their way into your diet, because you know what happens now and then when you're eating some macaroni and cheese off your toddler's plate, like I kind of do something, yeah, whatever. Anyway, it happens. This might mean that you are granted a little bit of amnesty there as your body can at least suck that up into the muscle versus having to turn it into fat. Okay? It's what we really want. We want to be able to have our kids mac and cheese and eat it too. So it's very simple. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. If you like more tips like this that allow you to just kind of like live life better, put it down in the comment section below. I'm always trying to hear from you on which direction to go. See you tomorrow.